Welcome to the Engineering Influence Podcast presented by the American Council of Engineering Companies and sponsored by the ACC Retirement Trust. Today we're talking with Barrett Lovelace, who is Director of UAS AI Reality Modeling at Collins Engineers, about how the firm used drones and digital twins on its recent Stone Arch Bridge Rehabilitation Project in Minneapolis. Bentley Systems recognized the firm's achievements in its 2021 Going Digital in Infrastructure Awards program, which honored projects from around the world for pushing the envelope on digital solutions. Welcome to the program. Thank you. Thanks for having me. So let's set the stage first. So uh, would you describe the, uh, the Stone Arch Bridge Rehabilitation Project and what challenges it posed? Sure. Um, so the Stone Arch Bridge is probably the most historically significant bridge in Minnesota, or at least the most recognizable historical bridge. And it's a 140 year old um, stone masonry bridge that was built by James J. Hill uh, for his Great Northern Railroad uh, back in the 1880s. Uh, it served as a railroad bridge up until sometime in the, the 1970s and was converted to a pedestrian bridge, which um, still today serves pedestrians. And it's a, a significant um, size structure and is located um, right downtown Minneapolis. So it's uh, a high profile. And the, uh, during a diving inspection a few years ago, we found some, some deficiencies that um, warranted a, kind of a closer look at the bridge and um, MnDOT took a closer look at it and decided that it was time for a full rehabilitation of the bridge in order to ensure the bridge um, serves the public for a long time to come. So as, as part of your proposal, this was to Minnesota DOT, right? Correct. Yeah, so as, as part of your proposal, you, you, you proposed using uh, drones and, and uh, digital twins to, uh, in the project workflow. Why, why was that? Yeah, so we have been doing um, research work with the Minnesota Department of Transportation on using drones for bridge inspections. And this whole concept of um, digital twins sort of became the, the focus of that research. And for th this bridge is such a large bridge with such a large surface area that capturing all of that data using traditional methods, whether it be just pencil and paper and making notes is a, is a pretty big task. Um, so we started um, considering using digital twins so that we could capture that information uh, with uh, the drones and communicate it through a digital twin which, um, so we, we proposed that in our proposal to MnDOT and they liked that idea. And so, um, so now we're using that as part of the project. So how did you actually go about capturing the data? So the, the very first step in our project was we planned all of our flights through our mission planning software. Uh, we went out to the field with our um, drones uh, it took us about a week. We flew the entire bridge, um, ended up taking almost 9,000 high resolution images of the bridge, um, collected ground control, and, um, and then we created our digital twins from that. And all the while the bridge was being used? Yes, we never had to close down the bridge to, uh, to do the work, um, short of maybe once in a while just asking pedestrians to to wait up 30 seconds or so. But other than that, uh, we didn't have to um, close the bridge or interrupt the, the pedestrian traffic. Did you have to use special drones or just are these just drones available on the market today? Uh, we used, uh, for the most part, we used the Intel Falcon 8 drone, which is a commercial drone. And a uh, couple of reasons we use that. The first and most important is probably because it has a very high resolution sensor. So we really wanted to be able to see a lot of detail. Um, the second is just that it's very reliable. So we felt comfortable flying it in areas where there, there are people around and um, it has a lot of redundant systems. So uh, it was a very safe drone to fly in that area. We also used the Skydio 2 drone, which is more of a, a consumer drone, but um, we used some of the enterprise tools with that and used that in areas where it was, um, real tight and difficult to fly the bigger drone. 
And you did all that in a week. I would imagine that if you'd had to do that with pencil and paper, it would take a little longer than a week. It, right. And um, so, yeah, the data collection goes pretty fast. And not only does the, the data collection go fast, but um, we collect much more data than we traditionally would using this method. And, then, and so then once you had captured all that data, what, what, what was the next step? Uh, so the next step, we, we capture the data, we post-process it into these digital twin models or, or a digital twin of the bridge. And we still um, did our traditional inspection. So we still felt like we wanted to go out there and, and get hands on the bridge. But uh, we took those digital twins, put them on tablet computers for our inspectors. And then they went out in the field and were able to just verify things and where they did make notes, they were able to make the notes right on the model as opposed to pencil and paper. So it made it go much faster. And we think also made the, the actual field inspection much more accurate and much more reliable. And um, so there was, there was a lot of benefits. I think it sped up the, uh, the field inspection part by, by quite a bit. Yeah, I, I saw your presentation at the, uh, at the Bentley Awards. And, um, and there was one instance where you basically said you had a, a quite a remarkable level of detail of what couldn't have been more than a square yard, yet it was the photo that you took from the drone from 100 feet up in the air or whatever. How, how, is, it, how is that possible? Well, yeah, and that goes back to um, using really high resolution cameras. So, um, so I think we, in general, we probably were flying the bridge about 50 feet away, which is, you know, still a significant distance. But with that high resolution, we can get that amount of detail. And we really, we really wanted that detail so that when we're doing design and stuff, we can revisit and it's, it's you know, pretty closely approximates being in the field in person. Speaking of being in the field, Another part of your presentation was you showed a hologram in your office of the bridge. It was, and I thought you aptly used the term Star Wars because it really was Star Warsian. I mean, how, what, what, what was about that? How did you, how did you set up a hologram in your office? Yeah, so it's, it's really neat technology. And we've been working with Bentley pretty closely over the last year to, um, to help them develop this software and especially um, help them develop the software so that it can be used as a bridge inspection tool. So we take these digital twins, we um, uh, store them on, the, on Bentley's cloud server, and then we can view them through the Microsoft HoloLens. And so we can, it's, you know, I like to say it's like bringing the bridge back to your office. And the, the big difference is, is that if we're looking at the digital twins on our computer screen, the, the scale is pretty small. Um, but if we're looking at it through the HoloLens in a mixed reality environment, we're seeing the bridge almost like we would see it in the field. So it gives you that sense of scale and you can move around the bridge really quickly. Um, so it, it's, you know, it becomes like a virtual inspection tool. And uh, it's been really helpful because we can go revisit things maybe that we're not sure about um, and use it to make better decisions. And that again, I would imagine is due to the, the high res of those of the pictures in the first place that you were able to basically recreate life in your office. Exactly, that's right, yeah. So it, looking back on, this, on the project, what, what, what would, what, you know, if you were to categorize the benefits from using the uh, digital twins on the project, what, what would they be? You know, I think the biggest benefit is just that we have so much more data available to us now that we're finishing the design phase of the project. Um, anytime we have a question about something, we basically can revisit that the bridge in a digital format um, so that we don't have to make um, conservative decisions. And it, we found that as we're having meetings about design decisions or, or things uh, with the Minnesota Department of Transportation or, or our project partner, LHB, we can sort of collaborate around that model and have discussions while we're all looking um, at that digital twin. And that way we don't, um, you know, there's no question about what we're discussing. We're not trying to describe something to somebody. 
and um, so that's been uh, been really helpful to be able to to realize that benefit. I mean, we just have you know as much data almost as we could wish for at our fingertips. I think it's interesting you make the point of, you know that using the term conservative decisions because if you don't have information, you're basically forced to to make sure that your your standard of care is good. So you you're forced to make conservative decisions. But in this case, that's not the issue. Exactly. And um, you're right. We make conservative decisions because we don't have enough data. And in this case, since we have so much data, we, we can make um, really good decisions. And conservative decisions are expensive. So, um, And if we don't need to make those decisions, we can sort of right-size our decisions for with the with the data that's available, that's a win for the public and for the for MnDOT and everybody. And 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 for 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 Collins, I mean, I would imagine that using digital twins significantly reduces the risk that you that you have to deal with on a project. Yeah, absolutely. We we definitely think so because um, you know there's there's less chance that we'll make a poor assumption because. Uh, if we have all that data at our, our fingertips, we don't um, have to be conservative. We don't have to, um, you know, hope that we're right on something. We know that we're right. And so it, it really reduces the risk for us in our, our decision making. And um, as we are putting the plans together, we're confident that, that everything that uh, we're doing and the details are based on good information. And I would imagine it speeds up the whole process because you don't have to stop everything to send someone out to the bridge to check on something. Yeah, that's exactly right. And um, and our office is only a few miles from the bridge. So uh, even that wouldn't be a huge lift. But if you think about it, I mean, multiple times a day, you, well, while we're working on the design, you just, you want to take a look at something and you can very easily do that. And then also we have uh, people working on the project that are far away from the bridge, or we want to engage experts in some of our other offices around the country. So it's very easy for us to engage them without um, having to have them make a, a trip to the bridge. And then I would also think moving forward, once the, the, the rehabilitation starts, that the, that the digital twin will be of tremendous value to the, to the contractor as well, I would think. Yeah, that's, that's our hope, and we are providing all of that information to the contractor as part of the bid process and letting them um, use it to make uh, decisions on their bidding. And our hope is that, and we're pretty confident that this is true, that you know, if, if they don't have to make conservative decisions while they're bidding it, then they're passing along those savings to the owner, which is MnDOT in this case, and so we're confident that we'll get, you know, um, a significant savings on the, the bid prices just because the contractors don't have to bid, build in uh, unknowns to their, their bid. They can, re, they can visit the bridge in a, in a virtual way and plan their construction and plan how they're going to do the work. Um, so we, we're hopeful that there's a, a cost savings there. And I would imagine MnDOT is, uh, is, would, if this, does come through would be would intend to use this system on other bridge rehabilitations around the state? Yeah, we think so. I mean, it's making so much sense on this project that um, everybody that's working on it, I think once you start to rely on it, it'll be hard to go back to uh, not having that information on your fingertips. So at your fingertips. So um, we've already had discussions about um, using it on on other projects and and I think going forward, um, it just makes so much sense that, um, you know, the industry will, will start using it on, on every project like this. It does sort of feel like a wave coming through the industry. It's, it's uh, like you say, it, it, once you use it, you don't want to go back. Yeah, exactly. And, um, and you know, it really, it, it doesn't add much cost at the, at the beginning part. Um, and we think saves, um, you know, way more money than we we spent on collecting the data and processing the data. Well, great. I appreciate you talking to us about it. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate your time. And uh, this has been the Engineering Influence Podcast presented by ACEC and sponsored by the ACC Retirement Trust. Thanks for listening.